we've seen a 6% increase year on year, passenger numbers, culminating in a record high of 1.65 billion users of the network last year. The existing junction at Norton Bridge is a flat junction and this means that trains using the network pass between the slow and the fast lines. At Stafford we've got life expired signalling infrastructure which needs to be replaced. Network Rail are investing £250 million in the construction of a new flyover junction at Norton Bridge including 11 new bridges and six miles of new railway. And at Stafford, we're replacing the existing signalling infrastructure to improve the reliability of the network. So the Staffordshire Alliance is a partnership between Network Rail, Langer Orcs, Atkins and Volker Rail to deliver the Staffordshire Area Improvements Programme. Those works involve 11 bridge structures, about a million tonnes of earthworks, uh, four river diversions and 1.2 kilometres of new road. The Norton Bridge element of the works is basically a greenfield project um, interfacing with the railway at four locations. Uh, we've had to work hard as an organisation to drive performance in the areas of ecology, archaeology and interface with the local community and we've got dedicated teams within the Alliance to make sure we perform in those areas. The Staffordshire Area Improvements Programme will relieve the last major bottleneck on the West Coast Main Line. It will mean more freight and passenger services, which is great news for rail users. So why did we choose this route? We developed four options in detail, but ultimately we chose the one you can see taking shape behind me. In making that decision, many different factors were considered, but we chose this one because it met the needs of the railway and it minimised the environmental impact. One example of that environmental impact is that the material you see coming out of the cutting behind me can be used on the site to build embankments. That's much better than needing to import or export material on local roads. Finally, this option was found to be both affordable and to have the smallest carbon footprint. We've had significant challenges to overcome on the site. Uh, we have a huge amount of earthworks to achieve. Um, we've got 12 structures to construct within a very short period of time, all within proximity of the West Coast Main Line and within proximity of a number of local neighbours. The Staffordshire Alliance Way of Working has allowed us to break down some of the barriers that would normally exist in a contract of this size. For example, we've managed to install the abutment units that sit behind me, which weigh 53 tonnes within five metres of the rail while that rail is live. We've taken a slightly unique approach to bridge building on site. Um, we've formed uh, abutment shells. So we've formed shells away from site with the reinforcement contained within them. We've transported them to site and lifted them in in one unit, um, all with the West Coast Main Line still live. So we've done it under ALO working conditions, um, which has increased the speed at which we've built the abutments and has reduced the amount of possession working to construct those abutments. Stafford is a resignalling project. Uh, we are recontrolling Stafford number four and number five signal boxes down to the new control centre at Rugby Rock. Uh, we're renewing 91 new signals, all the cabling, the power, uh, we've got some P-way works with the sidings. There's major alterations to, uh, to the station in terms of new signalling at either end uh, and we've got, that goes between College and Doxey and Penkridge. Stafford is an old station and surrounding areas old in terms of railway. There are a lot of buried services, uh, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure that we've got to avoid uh, and we have to take cognizance of that in part of our design in terms of our integration and our IDC process utilising buried services and various other information we require to make sure we get the design and the, uh, the infrastructure in the correct place. The approach to innovation at Staffordshire Alliance has been to make it part of everybody's day job and the way that's done is to engage with local and national companies to bring their technology to bear on the project. They have the technology and we have the opportunity to apply it. So, this is one example of innovation on the Stafford Area Improvement Programme. This is a signal post and the thing it's standing on is called a ramp pad. The signal will traditionally be supported on a 6-10 diameter steel pile. Um, 
and we've managed to remove the pile and instead replace it with a shallow foundation solution, which means that we've taken out the cost, the noise and the man-machine interface associated with the piling rig. So we think we can install these now for around one third the cost of the steel pile. We've got uh, quite an array of wildlife on the site. We initially did surveys before the project started and that obviously told us what was here and then we knew how we had to protect it. That protection was in forms of licenses which we gained from Natural England. Um, species that we've got in particular are great crested newts, um, otters, barn owls and then we have got quite a lot of nesting birds on site at the moment and if you drive around the site you will see signs and there are birds actually sitting on their nests as we're working around them. So again we're working alongside wildlife, we're protecting it um, and we're making sure it stays here. A perfect example of mitigation is the oak tree behind me. We've been able to place some limbs from another tree um, onto this which has got a fantastic bat potential and we've actually created features in these blocks that we've put onto the tree so that bats will utilise their natural habitat. We've also built numerous ponds at Challaford House um, and that's the mitigation for our great crested newts and we've got otter netting throughout the site uh, where we're working alongside otters and otters, otter prints are still being found so we know that we're not disturbing them during our works which is really good. The site has been really exciting and from this site we've found some absolutely fantastic things that have presented evidence of human activity from the prehistoric period all the way through to the Victorian period when they originally built the West Coast Main Line. We had lots of pieces of work wood which indicate on-site woodland management. We also had a beautifully worked lid from a butter churn and we also found a hoard of early 20th century ginger beer bottles which have been a really lovely find. Again, we think they're related to some sort of workman that was, you know, working in this area and maybe took it to work as a treat. The Alliance has helped us tremendously as archaeologists to get the job done as quickly as we can when we've needed to. Um, at Bridge 6, on the commissioning critical pathway, um, we had the significant find of Anglo-Saxon medi uh, early medieval material and the bus churn lid. Had we have delayed that area of the site, we would have, it would have had substantial ramifications for the rest of the project. The Alliance gave us the manpower and the equipment we provided the archaeological team, we got the job done as a team as quickly as we could. There have been significant benefits to the project of delivery under the uh, Alliance model. It allows us to generate a collaborative and no-blame culture and that in turn allows the team to focus on project delivery. By engaging our multidisciplinary team early in the process, we've coordinated planning, design and constructability and it's allowed us to look at innovative construction techniques like design for manufacturing assembly on the bridge structures.